Takamatsu is the second biggest city on the island of Shikoku, which is my next destination. It has a lot to see. There's a fantastic garden, there's some really nice mountainous regions to explore nearby, and well, join me and see what we find. For one, this is one of the nicest trains I've ever got on, so this takes you right across the Atlantic Sea. What a view out the window. Okay, so I've just got into my Takamatsu Airbnb apartment. Let's have a look around. Right at the entrance, we've got a game cam, which currently has my suitcase. And somewhere to put some little supplies. Microwave to do some, I say cooking, basic cooking. But we have both a fridge and a freezer, which has not had for quite a while. I accidentally put some carrots in the freezer section of my joint when I hit yesterday and ruined it. We've got a hop to get actually cook. Don't know if I will do, because I don't really have many days here. Um, a little stool, a nice big old bed with some air conditioning units. Not the comfiest looking chair I've ever seen in my life. I can't remember what was there. We do have a bit of a balcony bit. It's currently half open. No view from it, of course. And then, like I said, the air conditioner. We do have a washing machine. I need to do some washing, so that's good. And then your standard bathroom, but a bit more clean and modern than I've seen in some of the other ones with some amenities, things here and there. So I think for today, because this is actually kind of, you know, on the edge of my clean clothes, I'm gonna do my washing so we can go and explore. My advent calendar is subject to gravity it turns out i guess it was a very cheap one but um <laughs> that might require some fixing even if the view from inside isn't fantastic all i need to do is turn just a little bit when i leave my room three things on the agenda for today one there's a park i would like to get to and it closes in an hour and a half and it's half an hour's walk away so we'll be lining that park garden and then from there another half an hour away there is three other things i want to do one, there's my favorite udon restaurant, which is only on that side of town. Two, there's a magic event, which I want to go to. I've not played magic in a little while. And three, got to go today. And after half an hour, I arrive at Yutsurin Garden, which you're going to see for yourself. It might be one of my favorite gardens in the whole of Japan. Already this garden really stands out to me. So I've never seen one with such a massive mountain in the background of all the different colours. So I only have 45 minutes to walk around here, but hopefully I get my run as well. It's not in season right now. <laughs> So many ducks. I can see why there were so many ducks. No hunting now, safe ducks. Apparently from this bridge in the distance, this hill that I'm standing on, it's like Mount Fuji. So we're gonna have to go over there and find out. But this park is just like so much water based than any other park I've been to. I keep calling it park. And these these are the quays that we see in Animal Crossing. We've got the perfect colour mismatch. Here we just go everywhere, they must love that waterfall. Again, look at them, there's the waterfall on there. Just, is this an actual thing? Do they just like the moth? Just 
run into a Genshin Impact cosplayer here. Didn't think to <laughs> ask for a photo, but I said it was cool. Now, unfortunately for me today, this is one of the biggest parks. Houston Park, one of the biggest Japanese gardens I've ever been in. And that means I can't get to look at everything because there's 20 minutes until it closes. And that's not because I was lazy or late or anything. That's because I got to the hotel and I needed to unpack and do my washing. And then I didn't realize just how big this place would be. So I wish I came on a standalone day. Or oh, maybe I shouldn't have done my washing. But still, it is beautiful. I wish I'd have come <laughs> with an extra hour or two but I'm enjoying it for now, and that's what matters. Oh, I'm not on I found the red bridge. There's a gate between me and the red bridge. I've got to go around again, somehow. All right, we found it. So let's see if this is Mount Fuji. Oh, there's... A few fish gathered. There we go. There we go. I think if the trees weren't all in the way, the trees are nice on it, but when you say it looks like Fuji, the trees kind of detract from that. But it's still gorgeous. And look, look how many, there's so many fish in this garden. I've got mildly wide, I can drop my phone there. Yeah, there's 15 minutes left, so I have very little I can do. I'm gonna take a very mild walk this way. And then on to the next place. And they even have them to walk past a little step. Apparently there's more around the town that I've got to find. Apparently. This will go to the north gate next. So that was that was a lovely garden. I might even come back on Sunday. I might even come back in two days time to be honest. Because there was more of it to see and it was beautiful. But for now, onwards. Still happy I came today though just seeing a random Genshin Impact cosplayer. It was Kazuha in the middle of a park. I just, I don't know, that makes it, that's worth the 400 yen. And I've now arrived at Haruhi, I don't know, because that mountain in the distance looks awesome. It's a shadow, but like, I need to pay attention to that tomorrow during the day. So I've come to my Udo shop on the way, and it's at a huge shopping center, apparently. I've never heard of before, so interesting. What if this island doesn't have aeon walls or something? No, this is mushrooms apparently. No, I don't like mushrooms, so. That's not bad mushroom. I don't know what these are like. They're okay, they're quite cheap. I have no idea what I mean, but this is a specialty here, so. This is Sanuki Udon, which is the specialty Udon of Takamatsu, and I still don't really know what it is. I think I'm better that way, but it was real tasty. Afterwards, I went to my Harimuya Magic event, and it was a joint Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic space, because there was another country that said it was interesting. And then, of course, to Don Quixote, where did they have it? Yes, they did. On sale! I found on my journeys that it's somewhat hard to speak to Japanese people, because I don't like bars, and every story I've heard of foreigners interacting with Japanese people has been in a bar full of alcohol involved, and I like neither of those things. So if you're the same, recommend trying to interact with your hobby while you're over here in some way. Because I go and play Magic, and I had a few, you know, kind of nice conversations. Sometimes sometimes it's a conversation that I know a little bit, sometimes it's through Google Translate, and sometimes it's just that we know the shared language of magic. And if someone doesn't get a good hand, and I can see it on their face, I can say a word that I know, like, ah, damn it, that's not good. And whenever I go to a new city, I try and go to the main Haruya store, if there is one, which is the main magic store in Japan. And that means I just get to kind of meet some extra people. And that's nice. So this crossing doesn't have anything except underground crossing. And I've got up and down twice now and got them out the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know how I've managed that. Oh, it's it's past 10. I didn't have much sleep last night. Maybe I can blame that, but not really. I think I'm just being a bit silly. Random 10 a.m. Christmas tree. Why not? Japan is very well known for shopping arcades and as I'm walking home right now through this one I'm also seeing on my research of this place that actually this may be one of the oldest in Japan this may be where it started I haven't read the full story to know if that's 
fully the case. These are literally a sight that most Japanese towns and cities you cannot escape from. There will just be an endless line of shops with a roof over your head. Yeah, I've been walking for a long time and we've just finally got to the end and there's a lovely Christmas tree at the end. So that's nice. And just to show how free from convenience, I've seen four 7-Elevens in this one little shopping complex. It's like, oh, you've walked too far without seeing a 7-Eleven. Here's another one. And no Lawson's. And guess where I got my snack for tonight on the walk home? 7-Eleven. So I'm just setting off on my second day and the award for the most public bathroom goes to that. I mean, just wow. <laughs> Everyone can see. And this is the view from just a few minutes from my hotel of the inland sea. Now, this isn't the prettiest part. Fukushima, as you can see, has some industrial bits. <sighs> so nice to finally be here. And first on my list today was to explore the actual Takamatsu old castle grounds that, for the most part, are no longer standing. It's a few bits like this bridge, though. Now, while most castles in Japan that I've been to either stand as they are or have been recreated, this is not one of them. This is just a ruin. But it is one of the few castles in Japan that is right by the sea. You can see it from here. Even in towns that had a seat, like Osaka and Nagoya, the castle's ages away. Right next to the train station. This amuses me. Clearly, people tried to get through here, and that's meant there's a cone justified. <laughs> there's a lot of castles in Japan, and also surrounded by some quite beautiful gardens, slash sites, slash things. Everyone's favourite accompaniment to a beautiful castle. Slope for some reason. However, even if the main castles are ruined, the outside walls are still a little bit intact. I think this is the best preserved one. Or rebuilt, whichever one it happens to be. Okay, this is interesting. It says, in August 1965, the castle changed hands from the Japan National Railways to Takamatsu City. So just like the railways owned a castle? for some reason. That's, that's incredible. That's some history. And then after that, the city restored. And after that, the city did some restoration. So maybe they just used it as like a tap. Only this was a river. I'd be so happy. <laughs> he literally says it. A river without water. I was like calling it out like, oh, this. that was intentional. That's so cool. I like this more now. This is a cool garden. Yunkaku Garden. Very nice. So like I said, this whole garden's theme is, imagine if there was a river here, but there's not. And that has such an eerie, weird, cool, awesome everything to it. I loved it. Now I found a random building that can get them top up. It's not as tall as that one, but it does still give you quite the view. Oh, the sea. All, oh man, and the sky. This is a beautiful area, beautiful. See a little map of the surrounding areas. And this is where we're going tomorrow. And this right here, you can just make it out in the distance. It looks very cute. I think I might go and have a little look myself. When I first came out, I didn't even notice this massive build work going on. I was just enjoying the beauty. So even that isn't enough to distract from the wonderful to see. So I found out why slow pokes everywhere. But I'm gonna go and touch this lighthouse first and then we're gonna go and experience that. And there we go, we made it all the way out. And I've touched it, now I can go back.
Now I said Slowpoke in the temple and that was confusing for me, but then there was a whole tourist office section of just Slowpoke merchandise and then I found out that it's like a mascot for the region, which is cool. So as you can see I'd already eaten and then I came across this Ulan restaurant with this awesome art outside. Sadly, didn't remember to go in the next day. Maybe when I go back next time. Okay, so it's my last day here and this is the first train section in Japan I've been in which doesn't have any English signage. So I've used Google Translate and I think I'm on the right line. But because it like, goes, you have to walk over the line to get to the other line, I'm just on a 50-50 here. So if I don't make it, I'm going to have to wait half an hour or walk. the train station entrance for Yoshima. Now we get to go and see the place. And already it feels very different, just a little bit outside of the main city. It's quiet, the buildings all seem old. And I think I'm going up that mountain. I do find for a lot of these temples and shrines, you do need to climb quite high to get to them. So you feel a tiny bit worn out by the time you get to them, and you feel a sense of achievement. Unless you use the parking lot. Again, that costs fuel, which costs more than time, but not. But what is the meaning of life? Anyway, equally alongside that, it means once I come up, and I know that I'm going to go further up, there's no path, but there is this little grassy bit, and I can see fences that way. So I'm gonna risk it. Looks like maybe people have walked here before. Yes, definitely. All right, now, barbed wire, now. I tried. It looked like the other person had the same thought as me and uh, didn't go so well. But there is one thing here that sadly, my kanji's not up to scratch and the app, and Google Translate is fantastic, but it can't read kanji in stone, so there is that marks something, but sadly, I can only read one of those kanji, which says free, which isn't very helpful. And because kanji is kanji, it might not even say free. And there was this as well, which there's no sign, it's just say what it is. But I guess that's cool. There's also a suspiciously Western building on the way. Why not? So I am slightly lost. There is like, well, I say I'm lost. I'm in the middle of a busy place. I don't know where the start of this goddamn walking route is because Google's telling me to just walk along the main road, which doesn't sound correct, but I can't see any other way. So I'm gonna wander around a little bit more. What time is it? It's... So it's only one o'clock, so I have time to bugger about a bit. It's an hour to get up, an hour to get down, an hour once you're up there, so we've still got daylight, even if I've wasted a bit of time beforehand. Oh, so let's try and I find a sign on Google I'm looking for. God knows, I won't have any luck. All right, after literally just 10 minutes of standing on a road, Googling, I found one website that says where it starts, even on the official tourism website for Yoshima. It shows a pretty little picture of it, but that picture has no diagrams of where anything is. So I finally managed to find where I'm supposed to go, and I was in the wrong place. Oh, and the answer is, I got to this point, and I was supposed to turn left, not right. Now, I do believe I've made it, but I have made a mistake. This coat is bloody warm. It's been cold, so I've needed it every other day. But I forgot how much walking heats you up. And the walking's just begun, but I very well can't do anything with this. So, onward. Well, that path looked so promising. And now it is heading directly downhill. So I'm gonna hope that's just the way the mountain goes and then it falls back up. But maybe I've walked 20 minutes and the information I found online was wrong. <laughs> I've never learned, I never learned to plan something. I thought, oh, if I go here, 
I said it was a common walk, it should be obvious. But apparently not. And then like there's little paths like this that, that goes up, but it doesn't look very well used, but then neither does this. Oh, seven hells. <laughs> I mean, I've not gone so far that I'm past the point of no return. So I can walk for a little bit. Because there are some paths I dare not go up without knowing. But this path, the leaves are far apart enough that possibly it's the right way. So at this point, I'm just content to see where this goes. Because if there's one lesson I've learned, as long as there's pavement beneath my feet, I can't be too far off the course. If you start entering a mud trail, you turn back. But as this goes, like, this is a nice walk. Like, look, there's just a random tanuki statue. If this is the wrong way, I don't mind coming here. This is cool. There's a very mysterious path here. You can vaguely see littered with red lines. But that goes directly into the forest. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Now, once you get a million subscribers, then you have to do those things. Because it's like, well, I've got the content now, but... <laughs> Unless <laughs> the time I make this is a million people start watching. That kind of risk isn't worth it. And even then, now nah, I'm, I'm a wimp. I'm a wimp. But... Although, I have been going steadily downhill, and I've now just reached a graveyard that looks like the end of a passage. So I, I'm pretty sure I've gone the wrong way. Yeah, this doesn't look like the route to me. So I've tried plan A, and that's utterly hopeless. So it's time for plan B. I know there's a bus you can get up to the top for 100 yen. I wanted to walk it, but I guess I'll get the bus up and then hopefully the way down is clearer to walk. Maybe? If you're going down, you can't be going too long. You can. So yeah, I'm gonna see when the next bus is. I think one thing you can say is I clearly saw routes up the mountain and I'm sure they would have led there eventually, but I'm not an experienced hiker. And some of these routes, especially the ones that are more out of the way, can get, you know, somewhat dangerous if you're not confident with what you're doing. And if I'm not, then I'm, I'm just, I'm not doing it. That's not the kind of risk I like to take. And I have one horrible story, which I've already mentioned, but it keeps, it plagues my mind for these things. When I thought, let's take a nice little detour, turn down to one of the most awful experiences I've had walking and almost gave me a panic attack if we weren't just saved by the bell or my dad. So I like to explore, but I don't like to get lost in the wilderness. That is a, uh, fear in here now so we're making sure we take the right route so i can only just make it out just about there can you even see it on the camera you can't but right on top of that drain i just saw a kingfisher a kingfisher and a kingfisher is my favorite bird from when i was a child so i've always like held it in high regard but i've never seen one and if, even if i had it was over half my life ago I have seen that they are around Japan here and there, so to have caught the slightest glimpse of one, and now it is too far away for a camera to get. In fact, can my camera get a picture? No, the iPhone's not good enough, but like, I just got some moment of joy when I saw that, and I saw the blue and orange colors. And that means even if I botch up everything else today, oh, there it is. It's moving. It's just flown, it's like, it's just on the other side. Oh, screw it, I don't care about the bus. I want to see this goddamn kingfisher. My camera is not good enough to do it justice, but this makes me so happy. I've never got such a good view of a kingfisher in my life. And suddenly my plans for the day don't matter. Walking all this random way and getting lost. It's meant I've got to see my favorite bird for the first time in person. And so that was like so close. It's not like you have to weave between mountains to find it. I'm just looking at it now. The camera's not good enough. I just want to stand here all day now. Amazing. I've definitely missed my bus now, by the way. No, yeah, I have missed it. So I've just taken to wandering around. Maybe I'll find it. All right, I've done one more Google search. I found the name of a shrine, which is on the route, and I found a way to get there. So, let's see. So ironically, 
I walked past the shrine before and thought, hey, that looks cool, but I'm on a mission to find this route and completely walked past it. And that may have been the wrong way. Again, I saw a kingfisher, so it was the right way. But <laughs> let's just hope this is the correct path. This was on the guide I found. There used to be like a ropeway upwards, and I think those are the tracks. So following those directions, you find out that isn't the way. You turn and go the other way. And there's so many paths up to this mountain, but none of them look like the nice, pretty one I've seen in the pictures. I'm gonna walk up this for like a minute, because I said there was kind of a foresty bit, and then a path. But I'm doubting it somehow. Okay, well this is something. It isn't the route, but it's something. Peculiar sight, milk cartons. Cartons on top of logs. A bit of a complete waste dump. We'll just um, a little bit in between. Two rusted bicycles up against the fence. Honestly, this just looks like somewhere between a farm and a trash dump. And this is a dead end. I can't see any decipherable path that doesn't look like just wading through trees. So this is not the way. <laughs> I, I swear, I've, I, I bet if anyone else Googles it, it'll be the top result on Google for them. But my search is, who bloody knows? I'm, I'm having a right old time. I might not get up the mountain today, but I'm having my own little exploration. So there were boars on this mountain, and it's the first time I've seen like an actual like trap for them. So it looks like there's some like food in there. So I guess the boar goes in, and then it goes, sorry, you nicked, bud. And then they don't attack people. But <sighs> boars, I'm kind of like, I'll accept the risk of boars. If there's no bears here, I, I think, this is kind of like a very landlocked kind of place. I'd be surprised if there was any bears around. I've not seen a single sign. Oh my God. Okay, I've left the temple. I've come to the left. I found a sign that's 850 meters to the start of the route. There's pavement on the ground. I'm gonna go for it. Good gods, this might be it. And I'll be exhausted before I even start the walk. Although, <sighs> maybe at another graveyard. But there are still signs. I don't think it's the same graveyard, is it? No, it's not. Check them out. That one's more to the more to the more to the west. Good God! Matt and Brett before we started, I'm doomed. I thought I was following the path. I've reached a dead end. What a day today is, Jesus Christ! I'm not crazy. This sign, 600 meters that way. I've gone that way. There's a gate that way. There's a gate that way. I think I can just about make the bus if I head back now. <laughs> Maybe. Bus has arrived. So I thought I read that there aren't buses on Sundays. I kind of just gave up, but then I thought I'd just chill it for 10 minutes and it turned up. Oh, more here. Now, Shigoku has a famous 88 temple run that you can go and explore all of them over the entire island. This is the first one I've been to. <laughs> it's probably the last of this trip unless there's one in the next place I'm going. But it's a very pretty temple. I enjoyed that a lot and the area is as well around it. It's nice to find with you. And all the way up here, there was this tiny little shopping arcade as well. And I didn't get to buy anything, but there was something that surprised me and I had a look. Oh, up here. 
it's on the ground I'm not going to. You can just about see it's a foot off him. It's an ender server, slight fog, so there's just the ender server for disappearing to the distance. So now I'm finally up and I love how the clouds just blend into the sky. I love how the clouds and the sea and the middle just blend into each other because of the slight layer of fog we have today. I'm sure that makes the view a little bit worse objectively, but I'm enjoying it today. <sighs> so I'm slightly apprehensive about finding one of the routes to climb down it now that I know how hard it is to find them, but for now I'm just going to enjoy being up here. Now that I'm at the top, it's really nice to just walk around here. There's a path circling all the way around the top, it seems, with just intermittent views, where you can see the islands in the distance. I will say, of all the places I've visited in Japan, this is the best place for like observation deck, isn't it? You do this little walk, and there's an observation deck of every different angle around this entire place. You can see 360 degrees wherever you want. And that's kind of awesome, because most observation decks, you see one side of something, and then there's something blocking it. But here, your height, you're just at the right height. They've made the land just in the right way that you can see everything. <laughs> Once you get up. Including a little cat friend. Hello, Nickel. You okay? No? You wanna be left alone? Yeah? Okay, we'll leave you alone. We also have one of the first abandoned buildings I've seen. <laughs> It's just dangerously pointed out flats and very old Sega Enterprises games. These places I've seen can be, have all sorts of things in it, so I'm not interested to go in. But it's interesting to walk past. Nice little thing of benches. It's such a beautiful view. The city. Now, I didn't bring a single bit of food with me. I'm getting quite hungry. I've got water, but that doesn't quite satiate that. So, while I might normally sit and have a snack and enjoy it, I'm gonna press on to get a cheeky photo. And now, having done a full circle, I've decided I'm getting the bus down. Because this for me is now the mountain of mystery. I have no idea how to get up it. There are obvious ways, but I don't know. And I'm gonna leave it that way. And with all of that behind us, I got my last slow focus down. And now it's back to the station for our next destination. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.